Sarah Shaw, welcome to uh, the program. How are you? I am good, Tim. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really my pleasure. I was I was excited for this uh, podcast. I haven't done an interview in a while. I see that you have quite the um, collection behind you. I'm assuming that's that's oh. not a screen. I, I'm assuming that's no, not a screen. No, that's my real. Uh, no, it's my real family and my daughter's yeah. Lego of the Empire State Building. <laughs> It's like 4,000 pieces or something. <laughs> that has to go in there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always interested to see um, what people uh, have have behind them. And of course, um, I'm also equally uh, as intrigued when when people ask me, um, oh my gosh, your office is so clean. And, well, that's not really my office. That's a backdrop. But, and, uh, but they uh, never, never um, they always think, oh my gosh, it looks so real. <laughs> so, so matter, no matter what time of day it is it's always sunny at my office that's awesome well it's sunny here today but chilly and you are yeah. in uh colorado i am i mm -hmm. love i love colorado my daughter is a competitive ice skater so we've been to colorado several times for competitions over the years but uh nice. and then i had uh, my my uh college roommate um I think he's in Oregon now, but for a long time, he lived in Colorado. So uh, I was out there. I, I simply, the air just um, feels like you're actually on oxygen. You know, the air is so much more oxygenated <laughs> yeah. than, than it is else. You know, here in Florida, you just feel like you're breathing in mold most of the time. But, oh. um, but, uh, but yeah, there it's, it's nice and crisp. So I definitely envy that. Are you a skier? My kids are, I have a knee injury. So from childhood oh, no. so I don't ski anymore yeah <laughs> I have a I was a gymnast and a skier and no more yeah wow a gymnast and a skier with a knee injury yeah that will kind of put a damper on mm -hmm. that yeah yeah I have another client who li they live in uh Park City and both of their kids are competitive downhill skiers mm. so um uh, I watched that going on one of them got injured this year so I think that's a kind of goes with the territory par, yeah you know. par for the course yeah we have some friends here whose son is trying out for this uh, olympic team this year oh wow for february so isn't that what anybody always says right anytime i tell somebody that my daughter's uh competitive is she going to the olympics the olympics yeah <laughs> probably it's a probably. whole i mean you know it's a whole nother level yeah probably probably not but um, all right. Anyway, so let's um, uh, tell us before we jump into things, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you've been doing. I know that you have a very interesting past and you've done some really cool things. So kind of give us the nutshell version of that. So, uh, sure. uh, by the way, my audience is called Big Boxers, not yep. like the underwear, but more like the big box retailers. Um, and uh, and kind of just give us the, the who you are kind of short synopsis. You got it. Um, so way back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth in 1997, I left the film I remember industry. That. Yeah. <laughs> I did costumes for movies for a while after college and I left to start a handbag company. I had this crazy idea and I worked on this project night and on the weekends, I'm sure like many of you, and I ended up getting it into the hands of the anthropology buyers. And back then they only had about 13 stores, but they did have um, an online presence already, which was a little early. And they decided to place an 800 bag order. And I was like, I'm quitting my job. This is it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I kind of threw caution to the wind and I started this handbag company. I knew nothing about manufacturing or making bags or running a business or anything like that. Um, I'd had a paycheck, you know, from the film industry. and. I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. It just kind of got the bug bite. And, um, and then I just sort of learned the hard way, but I, you know, over the years, I got my bags into, I was selling in 1200 stores, um, mostly all boutiques across the country, higher end boutiques, um, selling my bags into Nordstrom's and anthropology, Bloomingdale's, Saks, Barney's, you know, different stints at different department stores. And um, probably a couple of years in, I started getting my bags to celebrities and nobody was doing it, but I got the idea from a costume designer friend who was complaining that she had to use Donna Karen clothes on a movie and it wasn't right and blah, blah. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, this is genius. You know, why right. didn't I think of this before? And so I went to the office the next day. I was like, okay, we're gonna get stuff to celebrities. I didn't even know how to do it or 
what was entailed in it. It was a lot of phone calls and there was really not much, nobody was really online or on the internet back then in the movie business. And so we started sending products to celebrities and then months later they started showing up in magazines and I didn't even know what to do with it really. I mean, cause nobody was doing this. So, uh, and it didn't even have my name in it. It would just be a picture of a celebrity like in a movie opening holding my bag. And I was like, oh my God, there it is. And so we, you know, cut and Xeroxed and <laughs> did all this. Right. Uh, there's there's no going like, viral back then. So there was no going viral, you know, Photoshop was like a million dollars. So only special people had it. So this was kind of those cut and paste jobs and whiting out, whiting it out and getting it through the copier. And we started sending it to stores and other magazines and people just went crazy for it. And it really uh, helped my business grow from half a million to a million in sales in a couple of years. And we got bags to movies, uh, Legally Blonde and Ocean's Eleven, America's Sweethearts. We were on tons of TV shows, Friends and Will and Grace and other shows. And all of those publicity moments just got us more sales, more publicity, more magazine placements. And each of those things really built on each other. Um, and then 9-11 hit and my investors pulled out and I ended up closing the company at the end of the next year in 2002. And then I patented a closet organizer for handbags. It was my one and only patented product and sold that like crazy and did half a million in the first two years. And we were in about around 400 stores and people started asking how I did it because there was the internet and right. people you know, could see websites and all that kind of stuff. And so I started teaching these little women's um, entrepreneurial classes at night um, through Ladies Who Launch. And I just, my classes were packed and more and more people kept asking, you know, how do you do this? How do you do this? And I could only do so much in a couple hours. And so someone said, you should teach people how to do this. And so I ended up thinking that was a really silly idea, but they convinced me <laughs> and they're like, look at life coaches are really big now. And they're teaching people how to figure out what they want to do with their life. These people already know they want to create products. They just need your, all your shortcuts. And so I started consulting in 2009 and here I am and it's 2021. <laughs> right. I mean, like I was saying before we hit record, but by, by the way, um, what kind of dog do you have? Oh, yes, you can hear him playing. I have a mini Aussie doodle. Oh, nice. Puppy. Okay. He's one. <laughs> right. Uh, I heard the squeaky toy, but before that, Sorry. I heard like jingle bells. I was thinking yeah. either you have a dog or you have an elf running around one of the two, but both. Um, but <laughs> yeah. The Christmas elf will come out soon. Um, right. Yes, we have a puppy and um, he he's trained to dingle, jingle the bell when he has to go outside, but he was actually just pulling it off the door. Right. Okay. Well, it's, it's so funny how, um, um, how what, we're just used to certain things. Now I was telling, I was uh, saying the other day, I was on the phone with my state farm agent and then all of a sudden there's like a newborn baby just erupting in the background. <laughs> and, and the fact that that's just so completely didn't even phase me. Um, it's just a new paradigm that we're in, you sure. know? Uh, yeah. And so, um, what I was going to say, though, is before we were hit record, I was saying that we have so many similarities and uh, a start date is is one of those because, you know, I started my uh, consulting business in 2009 also. Oh, okay. and I, so I thought it was very um, uh, interesting that we both started the, the same year. Uh, but uh, um, all right. So good. So tell me a little bit about um, uh, your your bag. Um, what what was it about your bag that people like the most? So I created this little shopping tote style bag that was cut with pinking shears on the edges. So th that's the zigzag scissors. Yep. And it was stitched on the outside so you could see the zigzags. And it was just this little felt tote and people just went crazy for it. It was super simple. No one had ever seen anything like it. And uh, magazines just wanted to write about it and people wanted to buy it. God. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Right. So, so weird how certain thing, I mean, cause easily that whole thing could have been nothing, right? I mean, just right place, right time. Obviously you had your eye on something nobody had ever done before. And, yeah. uh, you know, um, a lot of times we talk about, I always put products into two categories, you know, it's either 
uh, enhancement or groundbreaking. And, and it, it sounds very simplistic, but pretty much every product in, in, uh, in, you know, consumer product will fit into one of those two categories. And what's hard about groundbreaking is that nobody's ever seen it, done it. It's never been around before. And so you're trying to convince people that there's a space for it, a place for it. I guess at least with purses, there's already a category, but um, mm -hmm. you're still, if nobody's ever seen anything like it, you know, retailers, as you know, retailers, they kind of want to jump into the stream that's already moving, or at least that's yes. what they want to do now, not so much mm -hmm. uh, back when we were starting out. But uh, well, congratulations uh, for that. That's amazing. Um, the fact that you got into anthropology is interesting to me because I've never gotten a product into anthropology. I've had them on the hook m multiple times, um, but they always just seem very, I don't want to use the word, I'm going to use it. They seem very aloof, you know, like, mm -hmm. ah, you know, yeah, I could take it or leave it. And the only reason I really want to get something in there is because it's my wife's favorite store. Yeah. And so I'm just like dying to get something into uh, a store that I know that my wife shops in all the time. And, and uh, um, I have some good product, but it seems uh, it seems to be elusive for, for me. What's the uh, what's the secret there? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Something unique and different. I mean, because that's, you know, I think a lot of people go like I see people who are who will say I want to pitch my pajamas you know and it's like okay they already sell their own brand of pajamas yep. you know one of the things that a lot of people don't know about anthropology is a lot of the brands that are sold in there are actually their own brands yep so you know they're there I don't know these days like what percentage of non-anthropology owned brands they actually sell um but it's not as big as people think because it, it so much of it is their own brand with different names on it yeah and it's a treasure hunt i mean the cool thing about anthropology is it's you know they make it so that people just wander around in there but mm -hmm. uh, but i will slay that dragon at, yeah. at some point <laughs> i'm sure you will <laughs> hey speak speaking of um of of their own brand i get this question a lot i'm interested in your take on it in fact it just had a coaching call on this a couple days ago uh, somebody was asked, hey, we'd like to private label your product. And their initial response was going to be no. Um, now, I know what I told them, but what do you say when people come and say, hey, should I let these people, should I private label my product? Yes, totally. Yeah, I see, mean, look. I, look, I'm all about the money. So if I, when I have a product line, to me, you know, there is the, the fame factor, right? Like for you, the other side is you'd write, you'd want to get your product into anthropology, right? Because your wife shops there and it has meaning for you, right? That's one way. It's kind of like I tell people same thing with celebrities. Sometimes a celebrity might just be for your own ego because you love that celebrity or admire them or something about them, whatever clicks for you, but maybe they aren't going to attract your target market because yeah. only you care about them, right? But that could be an ego thing. Whereas I think with licensing, no one's going to know that it's your product. You don't have to tell anyone. You can put it in the contract. I mean, when I had my patented closet organizer for handbags, I licensed it to a big company and I retained the rights to sell it myself. So same product, different packaging, different prints, two different names on it. But if you looked really tiny on the bottom, it said licensed, you know, from Sarah Shaw Inc. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree. To me, cash flow is cash flow, and the right. way to get to, to do the things that you really want to do is by having a business that makes money. Totally. And uh, and so, um, you know, it's not uh, so if they, you know, it's getting my clients stuff into anthropology. If they came to me and said, "I really like this, but we want to do it under our brand," I would be like, "Yeah, go for that." Yeah. Um, you know, and yep. so I think sometimes people get a little precious about their product. Well, I'm really trying to grow my brand. Well, how are you going to grow your brand with no money? Exactly. Uh, I mean, the other so thing too, right, is that if you're getting that money in, it's kind of free because you're not spending money to promote the product and sell it, right? You're just getting whatever the profit is on that, even if it might be less than what you might sell it for yourself, you're not putting any effort into it anymore at that point. No marketing dollars. Yeah. A lot of times you don't have to deal with return percentage. I mean, it's, right. it is, it's a, uh, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, getting a distributor in another country that has exclusivity, you know, they pick it up at <clears throat> X works and, and, and it's just, I, I call it that exact thing. It's free money. Right. That's so. I've done. I did that with my, <laughs> with my patented product. 
Yeah, it goes straight okay. from China to Japan or other countries. I all I did was shuffle shuffle uh, invoices around and you know uh, right. release <clears throat> the uh, letters of credit and stuff. <laughs> exactly. Um, <clears throat> all right. So going back a, a little bit, where did you grow up? Did you grow, grew up, up in, in Colorado? Mm -mm. I was born in New York City. And when I was six, my family moved to Berkeley, California. So I grew okay. up from six in Berkeley. My dad was done with New York in the snow and, uh, you know, Berkeley High. We all went to Berkeley High. And uh, then I left for college and went back east to Vermont. So, okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess at six years old, Berkeley wouldn't be all that much i mean at six years old it's one of but i mean had you maybe have been in high school when you made that shift uh man berkeley uh, uh you know berkeley area would have been just like mind-blowing compared to to new york city yes. on <laughs> so many so many levels so many levels. Been just like man we need a passport to come down here um yeah <laughs> so yeah that, that's interesting did you always think uh, that you wanted to be an entrepreneur what, what did you want to be when you were growing up Never, never. I'm a, I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur that we know of. All my siblings are entrepreneurs. Um, I never wanted to be one. I mean, I didn't really know um, how I was going to, yeah, as a kid, I didn't have a career in mind. But when I was 16 and junior in high school, my parents sent me to France to go live with a family because it sounded like a good idea. And I was right. failing French. And so I spent a year in France and came home fluent in French and thought, oh, I'm going to be a simultaneous translator at the UN. This is the, like, sounds like a super sexy job, right? Travel right. the world, speak for somebody. And then I went to college and somehow stumbled into costume design, took that uh, class, loved it, double majored in costume design in French at that point. And then after college, I moved to LA because uh, my sister was living there. Um, and got a job working in film and thought I'd go to graduate school and get my master's and do, you know, Broadway theater. And I was having so much fun in film and no one seemed to even care. I went to college, let alone had a master's. So <laughs> I bailed on a, on a full scholarship to NYU and stayed in Los Angeles and worked in film until okay. I got the bug to start my handbag company. Is there, um, what's the to you, to you like what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur and then what's the worst thing so i think the best thing is for me is the self organization and being able to allot my time as i want on the kind of structural side but for me the real value at this point is i love helping women mostly women i do have a few male clients but mostly women um, kind of jump that curve that I never had access to, right? I mean, I started right. totally in the dark ages, right? No email, no internet, no Google, you know, it's like my kids are like, how'd you survive without Google? Right. Um, right? <laughs> and um, sometimes they'll say, was that pre-Google or post-Google? <laughs> you know, they're almost 14. I have twin girls. And, um, and so, for me, the ease of business these days, right, with, you know, Zoom, right, we're talking to each other from across the country, you know, doing international business, being able to email, you know, millions of people or however many are on your list with, you know, one stroke of a key send, right? It, to me, it's still mesmerizing at times. And I'm, I'm still kind of in awe at, at times in my life when I sort of am at, uh, a crossroads either with a client or with my own business and looking like what's the next step. There's mm -hmm. so many opportunities now. And in a way there's some, some of it sort of the thing I don't like is all the opportunities because sometimes it was easier when there was less availability, right? No social media, one less thing to do, right? No, you don't have to send so many emails all the time. It's not as competitive. There aren't as many businesses, right? It's easier to stand out. So I think that there is pros and cons to the way the world is changing so rapidly. And I love that um, Zoom has brought the world closer. I love that um, you can go on YouTube and find out how to do anything, any time of day, <laughs> you know? Yeah, craziness. Like, crazy things, right? I mean, if you don't know how to change your battery in something, you can look it up and someone's gonna show you how to do it, right? 
as opposed, you know, you can find how to do Google ads and how to run Facebook ads and how to run your business. And, you know, there's, I think that there's a way to do things yourself these days that was never available before. And I think some people choose to go that path. And then there's other people who choose to call me or you, <laughs> right? To shorten that learning curve and be like, what have, you know, be able to say, what did you, what did you do? How did you deal with this? What should I do? And have you on speed dial where they don't have to go watch 50 YouTubes to get the answer you could give them in two minutes. Well, and I think there's also, um, you know, I was just talking to, I have some, some people in an inner group of mine that are onboarding to Walmart right now. And they they do have me on speed dial. What does this mean? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. And, and um, the answers to those questions, they probably couldn't even find on YouTube. And if they did, they probably would be wrong. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and so I, the value in, I think working with people that have done not have read how to do it, because there's a lot of that out there too, right? There's a lot of, I learned from somebody else and now I'm trying to teach it as my own thing, as opposed to, no, look, and I done it. I've been in at the Walmart offices. I sat across from the table with the Walmart buyers. I've been there. Um, yeah. And it like you, and you know that's why I'm asking you, Sarah. How do you get into anthropology? You know, because <laughs> you've done it, and so I did it. I, it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, so I think that there's so much uh, it, to me, and that's the that's the fun part. Um, mm-hmm. To me, the other really fun part is uh, whatever's on my whiteboard, whatever this idea I decide, whatever new service I'm going to launch, I can launch it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It's it, it's not like. A, back in the day where if you if you had a brick and mortar building and you were you know maybe a consultant or whatever and you had to you maybe had to put a newspaper ad or this now you have a following you want to launch a new service you just do it and it and it's not so hard i mean i love technology but i'm also glad that technology i think came on a little later cuz i i think back about my college years and if i would have had an iphone you know during college that yeah. would have been just <laughs> Nobody needs to see those videos. I mean, that would have been just a nightmare. So I'm glad that it all came a little bit after, uh, af- after that. So, yeah. um, but I'm not sure. Um, so you're saying the thing you don't like uh, uh, as much about it is that um, I really could, I didn't catch it. Is that there's just too much? I mean, there there's uh, sometimes I find that there's just too much. Um, you know, and I think I, I notice that people get very overwhelmed these days with, you know, it's kind of a catch 22, I think, because you have to do all these things, but not everybody loves doing them. Right. It's not, um, you know, some people are like, I don't even know what to post on social media. And I'm like, all right, let me give you a list of 300 things you can post, (laughs) you know, and they're like, how do you come up with that? I'm like, I've been doing it for a long time. Right. And, you know, or they don't know what to blog about, or they don't know how to think of their company kind of outside the box, right? I think people, a lot of creators or creative types get stuck in the, the little box of their business, right? Like I make iPhone cases, right? Or something simple, right? And they don't know how to talk about the 150 different styles that they make or the, you know, 42 different phones it fits or whatever. And you go and look at the description on their website and you're like, it just says cell phone case, iPhone 12. It doesn't say what color it is, what it's made out of, what the warranty is, what the, you know, so there's so many things that people have to look at, right. That, and if they just don't know, I think it can be super overwhelming and, And so I think that sometimes with the amount of technology that's out there, there's just, you know, if you have a Shopify store, there's like eight gazillion apps you could be using. Which ones are you supposed to be using? Which one of these 27 that do the same things is the best, right? And, you know, it's like, then you're just going down these rabbit holes, I think, of looking who, who's, who's, uh, you know, what are the reviews? What are the this? What, who's recommending it? You know, is this person (laughs) credible? So I think that there can be so many rabbit holes to go down, like, you know, 
back in the day, the only rabbit holes I ever went down was somebody's blog roll, <laughs> you know, when <laughs> right. blogging first came out, you know, and it's like, oh, well, here's more blogs like this. And then you could find more people to write about your product or interview you or whatever. And it was this sort of antiquated, now it sounds antiquated, but at the same time, you're Googling something like the 10 best, you know, fashion influencers. It's kind of the same situation. You're just looking for it on Google now. And, yep. and, or, or, you know, hashtags on Instagram or different ways, however you do your research, you know, to find these other openings for yourself. So it, it, it is a double-edged sword. There isn't anything I, I think I really hate about being an entrepreneur or really dislike. I just find that there's so much to think about these days that if you're not well-organized and don't have this sort of streamlined plan or like little bits in your calendar that you do every day for all these things, like Friday can roll around and you're like, I forgot to make money this week. You know, like I was doing all these other things that I'm supposed to be doing and they don't know how long they're supposed to spend on social media, or is it more prudent to hire someone to do it for you? Right. Cause there's so many different jobs available now right. that, there, that there were even two years ago, you know, so I, I just think that it's, um, it's fascinating to me, the whole process. I mean, I never stop learning. I'm always have a coach myself, always learning something, whether it's Facebook ads or Google ads or how to start a different part of my business or somebody that I can call and ask for advice too, right? Because advertising is a whole nother business that I'm not getting into, but you still need to know how to do it for yourself. You, you need, at least need to know, I always tell, my clients, I said, Hey, before you go hire somebody, you, you got to know at least a little bit about what it exactly. is so that, so that you know, whether they're helping you or not. Um, right. uh, and cause I have a lot of people that they immediately, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to hire somebody. Well, mm -hmm. then you don't know whether they're doing it or not. Uh, mm -hmm. or they're just, you know, Oh my, um, you know, I'm, I'm up 30% on, on Amazon. I hired this company and I'm up 30. Well, how much are you spending on paid advertising now? Well, I don't know. Well, you should check know. that out because, uh, I mean, you could be paying like nine times the amount you thought you were paying to get you that 30%. So you're right. I mean, and, uh, and I think that people need to, uh, I'm like, don't, you're not gonna be able to master it all. Mm -hmm. So master at least one thing at a time. If you're working on Facebook, then master that. And then don't just dabble in everything. Cause then you're not going to be very effective. Um, right. all right. I know we have limited time, so let's knock out a couple of these questions. Um, because they're they're very targeted and and uh, I'm I'm going to be taking notes here. How to get your products into celebrity hands? Is that still the same today as kind of when when uh, you did it with your handbag? Pretty much, um, it's kind of a six step process. Um, first thing you want to think about is who your like look at who your customer is, right? So looking at your own customer profile. And then seeing which celebrities fit into that. So kind of like I was saying before, um, you might you might personally admire a celebrity, but if your target market sees the celebrity holding up your cell phone case, right? They might be like, well, whatever, who cares? But right. you want you want that person who's holding your cell phone case to make people whip their wallet out, right? So looking at you know whether you have a baby product, looking at you know, celebrities that had just had to have kids in your age range of your product. Um, you know, if you're a, a chef or whatever, right, making cooking products or sweatshirts, it doesn't matter what it is. If you feel like the, the this list of celebrities that you put together, you know, after Googling them, seeing what they look like, seeing what their life is like, making sure that your product fits in with their lifestyle, then there's a website called contactanycelebrity.com. And you can go get a membership there. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't have that back in the day. Right, right. Um, so I would say this is probably like 10 or 12 years old, something like that. Um, and you can go on there, get a membership, find everybody's contact information and just start your own Excel doc with your contact list and then write your pitch, you know, why you want to send them the product. Don't go on too much about how much of a fan you are of them. <laughs> um, and they, it's already implied and you know, what you'd like to get to them and why, you know, I make baby blankets and, you know, celebrity name just had a baby girl and I'd love to send her a couple of our baby blankets, you know, 
could you have her choose one or this is the one we'd like to send, you know, however you want to do it. And, and then you email that to the gatekeepers and just stay on top of it, following up every few days. And if they say yes, then which they often do, it's not a rarity. Um, okay. Then you're going to package it up, make it really pretty like a present and put it in a box and ship it out. And I usually suggest that people put a letter to the celebrity inside the gift, like all wrapped up, um, you know, hey, wanted to get this to you because, you know, you're um, uh, like it's you an know, organic you, blanket you, and, and you and we exactly. know that, you, that you're we know very you much into totally. yeah. yep. And uh, hope you enjoy it. You know, if you want any more, just let me know. Either ask your a truckload if you need a yeah, truckload exactly. of them. We'll just <laughs> right. send you send it on over. <laughs> and so the thing that is really great is if they do ask for more, then it immediately becomes a story, even if they haven't posted it or on Instagram or anything, because then you can go to celebrity magazine editors. You know, the, Pe the People Magazine and OK and Us Weekly. Hey celebrity name, we sent her some stuff and she loved our stuff so much she asked for four more, right? Because then it's showing the interest, you know, and I, sorry, I don't have a photo or here's picture she posted on Instagram. Um, Cause a lot of celebrities will post pictures on Instagram, not all of them. Some do, some don't. Um, sometimes you never hear back. You don't even get a thank you note. So it's really, it's a gamble, but the only actual cost involved is the physical cost, your cost of goods of sold product. on your product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now are these, um, so on this website, are these A-list, um, A-list celebrities or B-list celebrities or? Everybody. And there's everybody. like 60 or 70,000 people. And how many, so if you're an A-list celebrity, how much stuff are people pitching them like a week? I mean, is it like a retail buyer where they're getting literally hundreds and hundreds of I don't think so. stuff sent um, to them? Most people, like probably everybody listening has never tried this. Right. Because right? they, they, they think just like what I said, they're like, oh my right. gosh, and they, they would never even look at this. Right. They're getting a pile of packages every day, yeah. right? But they're not. And the, th the reason is, is most people either are too afraid to do it. Why would a celebrity name want my stuff, right? And then the other people are just too afraid to even make an attempt, you know? And some people can't take the rejection, you know? So you gotta, you gotta have some tough skin because you will get rejections. Um, you know, you will get yeses and do the victory dance around your house. And, you know, and there's going to be times where you're just sitting there, you know, Googling this person all the time and checking their Instagram feed 20 times a day. And there's never anything, you know, and then there's all of a sudden there's an unboxing video, you know, and you're, they tagged you and then, you know, you can freak out again. And, and then you want to be sure to use those immediately. Like there's no, I'm too, I'm too busy. Right. I gotta, right, right. I, I, I gotta go wash my hair or something. Right. It's, you know, throw everything to the wind, cancel the rest of your day, you know, get a, a photo, get the, you know, take the a screenshot of the Instagram post or the video or whatever, the thank you note, whatever you get back, you know, make a quick little one sheet, meaning, you know, the name of your company, the picture of the celebrity picture of the product, you know, so-and-so has our product, or if they, if they said something in a video, or you could quote them from what they wrote in the Instagram post, you can make that bigger, pop it out, do something kind of fun and, um, and then get that out to all the magazines right away. I mean, if you're in fashion, you want to send it out to all the fashion magazines, you know, whatever magazine, you know, outdoorsmen, whatever it is that relates to your brand, children's products, uh, but definitely get it to the celebrity magazine editors, you know, so before you, you know, get too deep in this, you also want to build your celebrity editor lists and make sure that you've you know, that you're not scrambling for three weeks to get to try to figure out names. where to send it. Yeah. Right. Because it does. I mean, kind of old news is no news. So, you know, if you're posting something three weeks later that the celebrity posted, it, it can sort of have the moments passed. And then right, if you're yeah, trying it's... to sell to stores, you want to send them, you know, an email. Look, look, guess what? And same with your online shoppers, right? The hope, the hope is that the person's holding up your cell phone case or a baby blanket. And then everyone who's on your mailing list, is like, give me one, give me one. Yeah. It's interesting the way you're, the way you're saying it, it it's almost like I would have thought that it would have been better if you found your product just being worn 
like kind of like you did uh, um, by, by celebrity, but maybe not so much. And here's what, like I have a client where, um, and one day he saw a video on Instagram of Will I Am and, and I think it was Kylie Jenner and she pulled, he had these uh, electric glasses, um, uh, uh, neon glasses. She pulled them off his, Will I Am's head and put them on and they were talking about him and those were his glasses. <laughs> um, so Sometimes of course he, he like, don't know. Yeah, so, so he snapshotted this video and he shared it, but they weren't talking about his brand. They weren't saying his brand. They weren't mentioning his brand. They were just talking about the glasses. And so he had to literally convince people that these were his, um, literally his, his own patented glasses. And I think that would be a lot harder than if they were like, oh my gosh, check these new, you know, blah, 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 blah glasses I just got. They're so amazing. And then you say the name and then boom, everything. So it could even be, I think a lot of people are waiting to strike gold and wouldn't it be great if a celebrity used my stuff. Maybe it's actually better to do what you're saying so that when they do talk about, they're actually talking about you and your product and your brand. I think both work. Um, I mean, when celebrities would be in magazines with my stuff, you know, rant, can, candid shots, it never had my name. Um, yeah. And, you know, whether it was Liv Tyler from Party of Five or Kristen Davis from Sex and the City, right? I mean, they're just standing there holding your bag and you're like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to make as much money off this photo as I can. And so I think it's, it's really showing that you, that your force at that point, right? Getting it out to the magazine editors, getting it out to your online shoppers, you know, being able to, if it's something stylish like glasses, right? You could even write to the gatekeepers and say, hey, these people are wearing my glasses. I'd love to send it to so-and-so. Um, and, you know, put a link to the video that you've put on your website under your press section. And, you know, so there's, there's a lot of ways to promote this and stores, you know, if they've got a little video running on an iPad or they've got a photo of someone, you know, hey, look, right? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't matter if it has your name on it. You can just stick your logo on the photo. So, so big, <laughs> yeah. So big boxers, I hope you're listening because it's not is so kind of like I always say, getting into retail seems really hard, but it's not the hardest part, right? The hardest part is getting your product to sell through and getting a reorder. It sounds to me like getting a celebrity to wear your stuff is not the hardest part, even though it's hard. The hardest part is making sure you get it to the right people so the right people see it. And I think yes. that's where he, this one client went all wrong is he tried to promote it himself, but he doesn't have the same reach as People Magazine or, uh, or somebody like that. And so if you're gonna go down this path, like Sarah said, make sure that you know who you're gonna immediately send it to so that they can blow it up and, and make, right. a big, make a big uh, mm -hmm. deal out of it. Um, that's what uh, I mean. There, Sarah. There's so much stuff, and we're running out of time. We may have to do a part two. Um, <laughs> I'll be uh, so before that. we, uh, you were telling me earlier that you have a a group. It, mm -hmm. I know you didn't call it a mastermind, or did you? No, nope. it's more. It's a group. What is? What is your? What does your group do? So I have a kind of a hybrid between, uh, it's a group coaching program, but it's a hybrid between DIY, meaning watching videos and learning everything that I have up here, right? Teaching you how to get into stores, sell to, uh, get into magazines, uh, pitch to celebrities, uh, what to do with your online shopper, you know, promotions, emails, um, how to do trade shows and trunk shows, pop-ups, home parties, how to work with sales reps, all, all the things that you might not know. But, and we also give you access to all of our thousands and thousands of store contacts, our, all of our media contacts, all our celebrity contacts, and it's lifetime access. But the hybrid part is I do two group coaching calls every week. So twice a week, you can hop on a Zoom just like this. I can answer your questions, help you along. A uh, private Facebook group where I can help you edit your letters. Um, you know, people who take advantage of my generosity <laughs> uh, really... Right really do get ahead. You know, the people who are on the calls at least once a week, you know, getting me to review their letters, their pitches, you know, get my two cents into it. Does this sound good? Is it clear? You know, so, and those are the people who are really getting ahead. So because you have like videos and tutorials, it's not like when people, if somebody joined your group today, they're not necessarily jumping in um, 
where everything's at, they can start back at the beginning and catch themselves up as fast as, yep. as fast or as slow as, as the, their pace. And as then they, they can just jump mm -hmm. into your, your bi-weekly uh, uh, Zoom calls, which mm -hmm. bi-weekly, that's, that's pretty amazing. How many, um, do you have uh, international people that are in here too from other countries into your group? I do, yeah. I have a few women from England in the group, um, some Canadians. Um, I think that's uh, uh, one person from India. It sounds to me a little bit like when my wife told me to come and have a Manny Petty. She's like, she told me, there's guys in there, honey. You can go in there. And there's and then when I went in there, there was like no guys. Although yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, and I never again uh, said when she would go like, oh my gosh, my nail appointment it took so long. I'm like, whatever. People rubbing your hand and your arm. And yeah, I, I, that's so horrible. Yeah, it. it sounds yeah. to me like Sarah is saying that there are some guys in the group, but it's kind of to me sounded like it's more women. So, um, but uh, hey, guys, if you want to join that, uh, please uh, connect with Sarah. We're of course going to have all of her contact details, and um, uh, it being the minority is never a bad thing, right? No. Um, and perspective is 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 everything. So, getting a little male perspective in there probably is going to be a, a good thing. Um, like I said. Sarah, I think we're going to have to do part two of this because uh, I, I'm long winded and, and I had questions <laughs> that were not really germane to the things that you had down here. But I, I have thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you and, and listening to you and um, and hearing your story. Thank you for for coming on the podcast so much and, and sharing. Um, we, uh, of course, would love to have you back. I'd love to come back. All right. Well, guys, uh, um, Sarah, thanks so much. And again, we'll we'll connect again. Um, and that's kind of that's it for now. All right. I can't wait. Have a great day. You too.